twin earthquake with their epicenter in Bajhang jolted Nepal earlier this afternoon. The earthquakes were also felt in the federal capital, Kathmandu. A dry landslide following the jolt has obstructed the Jai Prithvi Highway while losses have yet to be determined. Good evening, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. An indefinite curfew in place in Nepal Ganj following conflict between local communities. Demonstrations, however, continued despite curfew orders. Three more individuals, including one Chinese national, arrested in connection with 11 kilogram gold smuggling case. CIB looking for a connection with the 60 kilogram gold scandal. Police in the Indian capital Delhi raid homes of several prominent journalists in connection with an investigation into funding of news website NewsClick. And Nepal put up a valiant effort in the 23-run loss to India in the quarterfinals of the 19th Asian Games. Yashashvi Jeshwal scores a century as India reached the semis. Back to earthquakes with epicenters in Bajhang district jolted western Nepal earlier this afternoon. According to the National Earthquake Monitoring and Research Center, an earthquake measuring 5.3 magnitude on Richter scale was recorded at 2.40 p.m., followed by another jolt of 6.3 magnitude at 6 minutes past 3 p.m. The jolts were also felt in Kathmandu. Based on the latest update, two individuals of Jai Prithvi Municipality, Ward No. 10, have been injured and have been taken to the district hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, a dry landslide after the earthquake has obstructed the Jai Prithvi Highway. District Administration Office, Marke, has imposed a curfew in Nepal Ganj. The administration has imposed an indefinite curfew in Nepal Ganj, sub-metropolis area to avoid a communal violence. According to Bake Chief District Officer Bipin Acharya, a curfew order has been issued from the Rapti River in the east, Indrapur in the west, Rajha Airport in the north, to the southern border point of Nepal Ganj sub-metropolis, while prohibiting any form of assembly and rallies. Prior to this, a peace rally was held earlier this morning in Nepal Ganj. However, the administration had to impose the prohibitory order after the situation grew intense. Four individuals were injured during the clash this morning while the market area was vandalized as well. Protests have continued despite the declaration of curfew. The district administration office has called an all-party meeting yesterday to maintain peace in the city. Saying the police had failed to take the situation seriously, those attending the meeting had criticized the security department. Yesterday, the administration had also urged not to hold any activity, disrupting the harmony and hurting religious beliefs. Meanwhile, the issue has also been raised at the parliament. Addressing today's meeting of the House of Representatives, parliamentarian Thawal Samsher J.B. Rana had urged to maintain peace and security. Saying the root cause of all problems was cybercrime, he called for actions against those involved. Three more individuals have been arrested in connection with the 11 kilogram gold that was retrieved from Dolakha. One of the three arrested is a Chinese national. According to the Central Investigation Bureau of Nepal Police, the Chinese national was responsible for smuggling the gold to Kathmandu and the other two arrested, who are Nepali nationals, were responsible for finding customers for the gold. The arrested Nepali nationals have been identified as Sanat Pradhan and Lal Bahadur Tamang. The CIB had earlier arrested seven people in connection with the scandal. The police had recovered the gold on Wednesday last week from Dolakha as it was being smuggled from China. This incident comes amid the hearing on the 60 kilogram scandal. The CIB is looking for potential connections between the two cases. The Chief Executive Officer of Millennium Challenge Corporation, Alice Albright, who is on her Nepal visit, has called on Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal. Albright met with Prime Minister Dahal this morning at his official residence in Balatar. According to the Prime Minister's Secretariat, the two discussed on the bilateral cooperation between the two sides and the implementation part of the Millennium Challenge Corporation project. 
All right, who arrived in Nepal yesterday has also met with main opposition, CPNUML's chair, KP Sharma Oli, and Minister for Physical Infrastructure and Transport Management, Prakash Jwala. MCC project was signed between Nepal and the U.S. on 2017, and its implementation kicked off from 31st of August this year. Main opposition, CPNUML, has criticized the government, saying it had not been able to maintain good governance. Speaking during the special hour of the House of Representatives session today, Oli said the government had been operating on free will. He also criticized the Home Minister for what he called a failure to arrest those involved in gold smuggling and criminalization of politics. Oli spoke for almost two hours at the parliament as he also went on to question the pre president's pardon granted to people serving prison term on the occasion of Constitution Day. He alleged the government of trying to influence the judiciary. Nepali Congress lawmaker Gagan Thapa demanded the government implement the agreements struck with various professional groups. Other lawmakers drew the government's attention towards rising inflation ahead of festivities. The World Bank has forecasted Nepal's GDP growth at constant market prices at 3.9% for the upcoming year 2024. Releasing its Nepal development update, the World Bank has estimated the growth rate based on the lifting of import prohibitions, revival of the tourism sector, easing monetary policies, among others. However, it highlights the persisting risks of irregular rainfall on agricultural productivity, the impacts of export bans by India, inflation, increase in policy rates, delay in rising and managing internal loans, among others. The World Bank has forecasted the highest GDP growth rate in South Asia for India at 6.3% for the year 2024, followed by Bangladesh at 5.6%, Maldives at 5.2% and Bhutan at 4.0%. The World Bank expects Sri Lanka and Pakistan's growth rate to be limited to 1.7%. Likewise, Nepal's growth rate in the year 2025 is forecasted to be 5%. The food management and trading company has announced it will operate shops in 48 locations to provide daily consumable, in fact, consumables to the public at a reasonable price. The shops will provide pulses, rice, oil, salt, jumlas, lentils, and mountain goats, among others, at 10 rupees per kilogram, less than at other outlets. A total of 442 shops in 48 districts will be available considering the nearing festive season. The company is preparing to bring 2,000 goats and 1,000 sheep and mountain goats for the sign. However, the company has given the authority to decide on the prices of goods to committees under the respective district administration officers. The District Compensation Determination Committee, Bhairava, has decided against providing Parvat Raj Kantamishra the compensation that he had demanded for the land within the boundary of the Gautam Buddha International Airport. Mishra had transferred the land within the walls of the airport and demanded compensations. The District Land Revenue Office, Rupandihi, had registered over four bigha of land on, the, on Mishra's name some five months ago, after which he had filed an application at the Gautam Buddha International Airport Project Office demanding for compensation. The District Compensation Determination Committee held a meeting yesterday and decided not to provide Mishra compensation for the time being. Considering the documents and procedures of the land transfer, the committee has said the land registration process could be faulty. Meanwhile, the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority has begun an investigation into the matter. The Ministry of Finance has claimed that despite some issues concerning national economy, the country is not in an economic crisis. However, former finance ministers and lawmakers have attributed the failure in uplifting the national economy to the reluctance in implementing the new policy introduced by the government through budget. During the meeting of the Finance Committee held earlier today, Revenue Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, Ram Prasad Khimire, admitted that the government's revenue collection had not met expectation. 
He added that the scenario, however, does not represent effects of changes in the government policy. The Revenue Secretary blamed other ministries as well for the failure to utilize budget. In the meantime, former Finance Minister Bishnu Paudel alleged the government of not accepting that the country has been reeling under economic crisis. He maintained that negligible efforts by the Ministry of Finance would not improve the national economy. Majority of the members criticized the government for not clearing the dues of contractor companies. They hinted towards lack of efforts by the Nepal Rashtra Bank and the government to maintain a, a stable market. The lawmakers blame the government for trying to misapprehend the real condition of market by presenting external indicator and centralized data. Lawmakers suggested the government to intensify works of improvement, saying that private sector has been facing difficult condition. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. Why has the process to address the issues of the victims of loan sharks been delayed? Your options are A, delay in identification, B, administration's indifference, and C, political protection. Voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. Police in the Indian capital, Delhi, have raided the homes of several prominent journalists and authors in connection with an investigation into the funding of news website NewsClick. Those raided have been charged by the police under an anti-terrorism law and their mobiles and laptops seized. Officials are reportedly investigating allegations that NewsClick got illegal funds from China, a charge it denies. Critics say the move is an intentional attack on press freedom. Started in 2009, NewsClick is an independent news and current affairs website which is known to be critical of the government. In 2021, it was raided by tax authorities on allegations of breaking India's foreign direct investment rules. Among those who have been reportedly raided today are the website's editor, Prabir Purkayastha, journalist Abhishar Sharma, Aunindyo Chakravarti and Bhasha Singh, popular satirist Sanjay Rajora and historian Sohail Hashmi. Some of them have been taken to police station for questioning. At least three people have been killed and three others wounded during a shooting at the Siam Paragon shopping mall in Thailand's capital. Thai police on Tuesday said they had arrested a 14-year-old suspect, suspected gunman after a shooting at a luxury mall in the capital Bangkok that emergency services said had killed three people and injured four others. The Metropolitan Police Detective Department said on its Facebook page that a 14-year-old suspected gunman had been arrested and was being questioned over the incident at the Siam Paragon Mall. Scientist Pierre Agostini, Ferenc Krauss and Anne Alhulia have been jointly awarded the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physics for using pulses of light to study the behavior of electrons. In their announcement, the award-giving body said the work by the trio have been had given humanity new tools for exploring the world of electrons inside atoms and molecules with applications in fields such as electronics and medical diagnostics. The prize, which was raised this year to 11 million Swedish crowns, about $1 million, is awarded by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Physics is the second novel to be awarded this week after Hungarian scientist Katalin Kariko and a U.S. colleague Drew Weissman won the Medicine Prize for making mRNA molecule discoveries that paved the way for COVID-19 vaccines. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. District Administration Office, Banke imposes an indefinite curfew in Nepalganj sub-metropolis to avoid a communal violence. 
Three more individuals, including one Chinese national, arrested in connection with 11 kilogram gold smuggling case. CIB looking for a connection with the 60 kilogram gold scandal. Police in the Indian capital, Delhi, raid homes of several prominent journalists in connection with an investigation into funding of news website NewsClick. And Nepal put up a valiant effort in the 23-run loss to India in the quarterfinals of the 19th Asian Games. Yashashvi Deswal scores a century as India reached the semi-final. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.